Hey, what is going on guys over at Stealth here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the four most common Ezreal builds for Season 11 and giving you guys an analytical breakdown as to which build you should be going for in what scenarios. Mana Mune and Divine Sunder are staples right now for Ezreal as his first two items, but from then on out, there's a lot of variety. You have Ravenous Hydra, Serelda's Grudge, Blade of the Rune King, and then Full AP as the four most common different build options that we're going to compare. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So first, we're going to compare the damage of the four different builds by using two different combos and then testing those combos on different types of targets. So the two combos we'll use is a WQR and then we'll do more of a extended damage trade where we do three auto attacks and three Qs and then we'll be using those combos on three different targets, one being a squishy that's only got 60 resist and 1200 HP, one being a tank, so like a Malphite with three items who's got 260 resist and 2700 HP, and then a bruiser, say a Darius, who's got 120 resist and 3000 HP. So when looking at the damage output on the single target from Ravenous Hydra, it tended to do better against the squishy target than against tanks and bruisers. Ravenous Hydra isn't providing you with any armor pen or any percent HP damage, so it did come out a little bit weaker single target wise against the tanks and against the bruisers, but against squishies it did perform very well, and you do have to keep in mind that with Ravenous Hydra, you're getting the Omni Vamp, you're also getting the cleave damage, and then you're getting ability haste as well, the 20 ability haste. So with that cleave damage there, if you're in a team fight and you're using Qs consistently hitting those and there's a lot of enemies grouped up, then the AoE damage you're getting from the Ravenous Hydra is going to add up and that's not something we ended up testing here in this video. So you do have to keep that in mind when considering the damage output. After testing Cyrilda's Grudge single target damage, it actually beat out the Ravenous Hydra for every single test. So single target damage wise, Cyrilda's Grudge is going to provide you with more burst and more consistent DPS, but Cyrilda's Grudge does not provide you with the cleave. It also isn't giving you any Omni Vamp or any Life Steal, so you're not going to have as much sustain. But if you are just looking for a full on damage build on Ezreal right now, and you just want to be able to burst a single target out, and you want to go for an AD build, then Cyrilda's Grudge as your third item is really strong. And then when testing Blade of the Ruin King, where it's going to win out is against the more bruiser type champions. So against your, your Dariuses, your Olafs, these champions that aren't going to be stacking a ton of armor, but are going to be stacking a lot of HP, that's where your Bork is going to win out as a third item. So against bruisers, it dealt 2,134 damage with three Qs and three auto attacks, whereas opposed to Cyrilda Grudge, it did about 200 damage less than that, and Ravenous Hydra dealt even a little bit less than that as well. And then for the AP build on Ezreal, this is actually the one that's most popular right now over in Korea. It does have a lot more burst, so against squishy targets there, 1,341 damage with just a W, Q, and ultimate, so a lot more burst compared to the other builds there. However, it's going to lose out pretty much everywhere else, so against tanks, against bruisers, like just the consistent damage coming out of your Q and your auto attack is really weak with this build here, so it's just all about the burst. If you're able to hit your Q, uh, or if you're able to hit your W followed up by Q, the damage is going to be really strong here. But if you're not able to hit those uh, Ws consistently, then the damage is just going to be so much weaker uh, than the other AD setups. So now if we break down as to in what situation would you want to be going for each of the different builds. So for Ravenous Hydra, it is going to be best in most of your games as a third item. And if you don't go for it third, then picking up fourth is going to be really good. There's very few games to where you'd want to skip out on Ravenous Hydra there as third or fourth, just because the Omni Vamp, the Cleave passive is definitely worth the trade-off of a little bit less damage. And it's just overall a great item right now for Ezreal. And then as for Cyrilda's Grudge, it's going to be really good in most of your games on Ezreal as well as either a third or fourth item. You'd want to pick it up third if you are against two or more armor stacking champions. So say they have a Malphite in the top lane, a Sejuani in the jungle. It's going to be really good third in those situations. And if you don't grab it third, say you go Ravenous Hydra third, picking it up fourth is going to be really good for you. It deals just a lot of damage overall, no matter what kind of target you're going up against. So like Squishy's there, it deals the most damage with the with an extended combo, even against bruisers, it's just slightly less than Blade of the Ruined King there, so it's just overall a great third or fourth item option on Ezreal. 
And then as for the Blade of the Ruin King, I'd really only purchase this item right now on Ezreal if the enemy team does have a lot of bruiser champions. If they do have a Darius in the top lane, say like an Olaf in the jungle, who's going to be getting a ton of HP, but not too much armor, then grab this third on Ezreal. But in most other scenarios, you don't actually really want to build Blade of the Ruin King as your core four item on Ezreal for season 11. It's only really going to be good in those scenarios. Ravenous Hydra and Cyrilda's Grudge as your third or fourth items is going to be best for you in most of your games. Now the one situation to where you can build it fourth is if you really need a tank busting build. If the enemy has like three tanks, if they're stacking a ton of armor, you go Cyrilda's third and then you can pick up Blade of the Ruin King fourth. And then for the Night Harvester build there, if you are going up against a very squishy enemy composition, or if you're the only AP damage, then going for this build is definitely viable for sure. However, if you do reach later on into the game there, if you do pick up, you know, three or four items, then your consistent damage in fights is just going to be so much weaker with this build. You really need to be able to hit your W followed up by Q in order to make this build uh, successful for you on the Ezreal. So it is definitely a little bit more of a riskier build. It does take a lot more skill to to execute and it does have the weakest or it does have the worst win percent for any build right now on Ezreal so the stats don't really lie there and you can kind of see why based on the test that we did in this video. And then for those of you who are wondering, like, why not Trini Force on Ezreal right now? How come you didn't recommend that in any of the build paths? And it's mainly just because Divine Sunder is outperforming Trini Force in almost all scenarios right now in Season 11. Uh, the stats you get from Divine Sunder are just overall what Ezreal want more than what you get on Trini Force. So you get extra HP, Ability, Haste, Armor, Pen, and AD from Divine Sunder, whereas you're only really benefiting, you're only getting, like, extra attack speed from the Trini Force. That's the main uh, thing you're getting different from Divine Sunder, and Ezreal isn't really a champion that would want attack speed more than all those other stats, so you can still build Trini Force as a second item on Ezreal, but it's not as optimal right now in most scenarios than Divine Sunder. And then what about Death Dance? This is an item that used to be a staple on Ezreal as his third item in Season 10, but for Season 11, it's kind of just faded away a little bit and it's no longer really that great on him for a couple of different reasons. Number one is that Serelda's Grudge, Ravenous Hydra, the introduction of those two items, they're just so much better on Ezreal right now. The stats they provide for him are really, really good. And because the Death Dance changes, it no longer provides you with magic resist. You're only getting armor. So in a lot of scenarios, going for Death Dance just isn't really worth it. If you're up against like a more AP champions, then grabbing the armor isn't really, you're not really going to be benefiting from that. So if you are up against heavy AD compositions, it can still be built as a third or fourth item, but generally the other items are just going to be stronger for Ezreal in season 11 in most scenarios. And then lastly here to get you guys all set up for the room page on Ezreal, it's going to be Conquer with Presence of Mind and Bloodline, followed by either Coup de Gras or Cutdown. If you are up against HP stacking champions, definitely take Cutdown instead of Coup de Gras. Not many people are taking this right now on Ezreal, but the people who do, and in the situations to where you should be taking it, they're winning a lot more than players who are taking Coup de Gras, so don't be uh, just autopiloting, taking Coup de Gras every single game on your Ezreal. Secondary there, it's going to be Mana Flow and Transcendence. Nothing really better right now, so you don't have to worry about swapping that up. And then it's going to be the Attack Speed Shard with the Adaptive and the Armor or Magic Resist, depending on your matchup. All right, so that is going to be all for the video, guys. So those were the four most common builds on Ezreal and when you should be looking to build them. So hopefully this does give you a pretty good understanding now as to when you want to be going for the different items on Ezreal. And so you're not just autopiloting, going for the exact same build every single game. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you have yet to already. So thanks for watching. Have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.